from this video, I'm going to um, show you a series of examples using HGLM package and um, usually combining some theoretical points, well, explanation for the models, and some implementations and practical working R. So today, uh, we're going to talk about a very simple linear mix model or even not a linear mix model. Uh, so usually it's called one-way uh, ANOVA. So let me change my chalk color. So one-way ANOVA, one-way analysis of variance. What does it mean is that we're doing analysis of variance uh, for a particular response variable, so we try to partition the variance into something we can explain and something we can't explain. And one way means that we have a single factor involved in such an analysis of variance. Uh, for a simple case, a balanced design that we usually see is a um, uh, repeated measurement situation like this. So let's say we have uh, uh, in the observation one, two, and three here. Uh, and for each of them, we have some repeating measurement. Let's say uh, uh, we measure the blood pressure for the first person and they have measurement x1, x2 until you say x5 the second one you have y1, y2 until y5 so I have z1, z2 until z5 okay and uh, so this is a balance this so we have the same number of repeated measurements for each observation here uh, uh, so if if you look at the variance in this data part of that can be explained by the difference between different observations or different people in this case um, of course HLM package can also deal with unbalanced design but this is a uh, we use this as a very intuitive and simple uh, example to start with. So this is a data situation, uh, a tra traditional one-way ANOVA data look like. So then let's look at uh, how this model should be written theoretically. So usually we write a one-way ANOVA model like this. So why? So the observation for individual i and the j's uh, repeated measurement or observation so we have several observations for each individual so individual i observation j is modeled as an overall mean mu plus the individual effect right so the factor let's call it ui so for each I, we have a different value here, and we have a residual term for each observation. Okay, so this is a very simple one-way ANOVA model. So now, if we think about this, so if we assume the residual term to be, say, normal distribution, right, follows normal mean of zero where sigma square. And we regard this as the UI as fixed effects. So this is actually a simple linear regression model. But we have factors, right? So we, uh, if we write this in uh, matrix form, we have y equals x times a vector of mu. Yeah. If you want to say we have 
three people there's five three and then plus some residual here uh, and the design matrix right it should look like so the intercept we have a reference people uh, like this oops sorry um, then we have uh, ah, sorry let's start a new page uh, sorry about that so okay we have a we should conduct a dummy variable so we can have a different ways to construct this design matrix actually uh, so in a fixed value regression model we can have a, a reference level with all ones right and uh, for the first, second person compared to the first one, uh, so if this is the first, for the second we can have uh, uh, say one 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 here. For the third one, we have some one one here, and the rest is zero, something like this. So for person one, two, three. So the intercept is actually the uh, the mean of the first reference person or observation okay and now uh, we would like to write the same model right write it again yij equals mean plus ui plus eij into a linear mixed model form and in that case we will treat the intercept as fixed effects, the person effects as random effects. So in order to do that, what we do is that we construct the linear mixed model like this. Right? This is the general form of a linear mixed model. We plug in this one way ANOVA situation, it's actually quite easy. So, in this case, y will be the vector of y, I will not write it anymore. And beta will be simply a scalar intercept parameter for the um, fixed effects. So, because of that, then we will know that x will be a column of 1. Right? And in the random effect model, we can have a, a, a random effect for each observation. So we have a person effect, let's say we have three persons. So we, have a, we will have three columns in Z for the random effects. And that's the difference if you compare to the linear regression. So U in this case will be a vector of effect for person one, person two, person three. Right? And corresponding to that, sorry, the Z matrix will be one, one for individual one, individual two, individual three. Well, with number of repeating measurement here. So that is basically an indicator matrix uh, that tells you uh, where or to which person or which observation this particular observation belongs to. So if this is a repeating measurement belongs to in the person one, then it's one here, otherwise it's one here for person two, person three here. It's basically the indicator matrix. And the residual will be just a uh, E11, E12 for all the observations until E uh, the last one, whatever it is. Okay. So this is the matrix format uh, form for the simple one with another one model. And now let's take an example uh, to see how do we do this in uh, as a linear mix model in R using HLM package. So I have a document here. And you can also find this document 
uh, on my home page. So uh, before that, let me probably write the home page here. Um, if you go to www dot 1985 birthday.com uh, you will find the resources resources sorry for the bad writing resources tab and there you can find this document um, it's basically uh, one of my lecture notes for linear mixed models okay so let's look at the example here and here we have a simple example. So the data taken from Fierce et al. 1996, which shows an astral measurement result for five menopausal women. Um, so for each, so in the table we have five persons, and for each person we have 16 measurements, and it's in two parts, eight each side. And in total we have 80 observations. I mean, what we want to know is that we want to do analysis to see is there any uh, difference between persons in terms of astral measurement and uh, how much variation is captured by the difference between persons. So is the uh, or this here it has some text saying that it tells you is the measurement really reliable or not. So if you have the same instrument measuring the same person you should you are expecting to get sort of similar measurements all the time so whether the variation is small enough that we can trust the measurement okay and so this is the one way I know why we have a one factor which is person uh, and then we have 80 observations for the five persons it's a balanced design uh, it's a very basic one way I know now we are going to move into R and solve this question in different ways and interpret the result. Okay, now I have this astral measurement data loaded in this um, text file opened here. And on each column we have a person, and each row we have the measurement. So it is, it is a balanced design and we have 80 observations in total. So now I'm going to fit the uh, one way ANOVA model using HLM in R. So I'm already in the working directory where this file is stored. So I'm going to start R, like this. Um, so first of all, I'm going to read in this data. So what I'm going to do is to use the read table um, function. Let's call it data, which is read table as txt. And data is like this. So by default, we have some column names assigned v1, v5. I have 16 rows for the 16 measurement per person. So before the analysis, um, I have to do some transformation of the data in order to make things easier to go. So first, let's change the format from a data frame to matrix, like this. It looks similar, but we don't have any row names anymore. And we have some default column names. This is a matrix. Um, I'm going to create a vector of response variable, which is y. As we mentioned before, it's going to be 10 times log 10 based the elements in the matrix. Which is like this. And when I'm doing as numeric this function on data on the matrix, what R is doing is that it takes each column from 1 to 5 and combine them to be a vector of 80 lengths. So the first 16 measurement will be the first person and then followed by the second, third, fourth, and the fifth. So then I'm going to create an indicator factor variable for the five persons. And the easiest way is to just call it person, which is person one to five, and each of them 
has 60 measurement. So the person vector is like this. So now if we create a new data frame, data2, which is data frame y is our y vector person is our person vector. If we look at the first let's say 10 rows, it's like this. Now we have a two column data uh, in a nice format where each row has an indicator of each person and a particular astral measurement. So um, it's a repeated measurement for each person stored in a one single column. So now we're ready to feed the model. Let's call it M1. Okay, sorry, before that, remember to load your package. So require a library on HTLM. Load the HTLM package. Well, it takes a while for some reason. Come on. Yes. So now we have the package loaded. Our M1, the first model, is HLM. So the input, the fixed effects formula is our response tilde the intercept, which is 1. In this case, the random effects formula is tilde 1 bar, and then let's create a factor from the person. And data should be data2, this two column version of our data. So if we just type on one, it's a print out of the HLM fitting object. So it says it converts in three iterations. I have the variance component for the main model, which is residual variance. It's 0 0.32. The random effect variance component is 1.74 and five random effects for the five persons and the fixed value estimate for the intercept. So now let's check whether the result is identical or consistent with the current packages. Um, if we load the popular package LME4, and we refit the model using, say, the LMER function, where something different is specified as the formula. So the fixed fact is 1 plus the random effects in a bracket is 1, a bar, factor of person, and data is data2. What we get is a summary printout of NVR where you have the same variance component estimate as from HLM. So the random effects also. I um, have the fixed value estimate with standard error and something. Uh, actually, if you take summary of M1, you get more stuff from HLM where we have the standard error t value and p value from for the fixed fat as well. Um, if you take a summary of sorry I didn't store this so we take a summary of the LMER fitting we get actually the same thing. So it doesn't report to you the random fat estimate. But as you see in HLM, we report a 5 person random effect estimate together with standard error or the prediction errors. Okay. And since this is a very simple one way ANOVA model, so we can actually do a um, traditional ANOVA on a linear model fitting. We simply take y regress on persons. Uh, it should be the factor. And if you do that, we get a traditional one-way ANOVA table, where you have the sum of squares for the random effects 
sorry, uh, in this case, the right sum of squares for the person effect, the sum of squares for residuals. And if you want to have a look at how much variation is explained in the response by the difference in persons, you can take 113.264, in this case, divided by the total sum of squares, plus 24.408, the residual variance, you get 82% explained by the person effect, or the difference between persons. And the same thing can be estimated by the intraclass correlation in the linear mix model. And this can be done if you take our HLM fitting object M1, take the variance of the random effect, it's called var rand leaf, you can check the documentation for that, divided by the random effect variance component plus the residual variance component, which is var fix. And this gives us 84% variance explained by the person effect, or the difference between persons. So the intra-class correlation tells us how much variation is captured by the random effects, and also it tells us how much correlation you have within each random effect class, in this case persons. So since we have 84% explained by these random effects, we expect very high correlation also for different measurement uh, of a particular person. Actually, simply if you plot the data person and y, we get a figure like that. So it's very clear that we have groups for the persons. So within each person, the measurement are reasonably close and that's why we have a high intraclass correlation or the high variance explained by the person effect. Okay, then you may asking, well, why it should I? We have a different input format as from MAR, which is a classic mixed model fitting function in, um, in R. And actually, we do have other options. So we can refit the model, let's call it M2. This time we used a function called hlm2 in the hlm package where this function, what it does is that it takes the traditional MER type input formula so this is exactly the same as in um, LMER and the specified data is data2 it's done and if you check the model, it's exactly the same as M1. So what it does is that it actually it takes different input format, but does exactly the same estimation job. And another way, which is very powerful and special in HLM, is that we can take input matrix or design matrix as input for fitting the linear mix model or random effect models. And this cannot be done in other packages such as LME R, sorry, LME 4, uh, and any other packages. So we allow user defined design matrix. So what we're going to do now is that we create the design matrix for this particular example and we try how do we do this as matrix. So we already have Y vector. This is uh, what we want um, as the response. And we need the design matrix of for the fixed effects, uh, let's call it X. And since in this case we only have a, a single intercept, it's going to be a matrix of ones, this number of rows equal to the length of the response vector, and a single column. So X looks like this. Very simple. And now we are going to create a design matrix for the five random person effects. And this is going to be a diagonal-like block matrix like we described uh, with 80 rows, 5 columns, for 5 persons. So what we're going to do now is to create such a matrix. 
And this can easily be done by using a Chrome Nacre product. And, well, Chrome Nacre product can be done by calling the Chrome Nacre function, or um, we can do uh, using this percent %x% percent sign in R. So let's call it design matrix Z. And this is going to be going to be a Kronacker product, Kronacker of a, a identity matrix of five rows and five columns, and a vector of sixteen ones. And what this gives us is a matrix like this. So we have eighty rows, five columns. In the first column we have ones and zeros, and the ones corresponding to the first person. And we have the second column followed by 16 ones, third column, fourth, and until the uh, 80 rows. Okay, now we have the response vector y, the design matrix x for the fixed effects, design matrix z for the random effects. We can call HLM again to create model 3. HLM where y is y, x is x, z is z. It looks pretty boring, but it does the work. So in M3, we have five person effects, fixed effect estimate, exactly the same variance component estimate for the person effect and the residual variance. So this is how we do the same model estimation in HLM using different input format. And the last one using the user-defined design matrix is extremely powerful in HLM. And in the future, I'm going to show you how some examples can only be done in this way, but cannot be done in the other random effect packages in R. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.